Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cybersecurity as well as career topics. And one of my most popular videos on the channel is actually my cybersecurity salaries video that I made for 2021. And in that video, I really covered the overall salaries of specifically cybersecurity analysts. But to switch it up for 2022, I wanted to make this video on the overall cybersecurity salary averages across the board for all roles in cybersecurity. So hopefully this will be more helpful to you guys who may not be interested in just cybersecurity analyst roles, but I'll still be going in depth from entry level, mid-career, as well as positions up to CISO and all levels of education. And we'll also cover a bit of bootcamp salaries. So definitely stay till the end for that. All right, so first I want to start out with the average entry-level cybersecurity salary in the U.S., which is about $72,900 per year. This equates to about $35 an hour, and honestly, the range for this is very, very wide, with the lowest salaries for entry-level at $22,000 per year to $137,000 per year. So obviously, this range is literally more than $100,000, so the entry-level criteria, you can really expect a lot of different roles and different backgrounds. For example, someone graduating from a boot camp or someone graduating with an associate degree or maybe someone from a completely different sector or a completely different field and they're trying to get into cybersecurity they would still be considered entry level in cybersecurity so i do want you guys to keep that in mind when looking at these numbers since they were really going to range depending on your levels of experience your education the skills that you have as well as how well you do on the interviews and if it's a good match for the company itself and of course, another thing to always note is that the cost of living in the U.S. varies significantly from Oklahoma to California. Another thing to keep in mind for these cybersecurity salaries is that depending on the sector that your company is in, for example, a security company or a financial services company might value cybersecurity professionals more than a company that is in sales and marketing. Because in one case, you're protecting customer data and their money and things that people are using for their livelihood. And the other case is a lot less dire in terms of the information that they're protecting or how they're willing to pay for someone to properly protect that data so you'll see those differences depending on the sector that you apply to and i also wanted to include this list of of the cities and states that pay the most for entry-level cybersecurity roles and as you can see a lot of them are in california but of course this is kind of as expected because the cost of living in california is definitely a lot higher so starting with an entry-level salary in the 80 90k range is definitely not unheard of but another thing to note is that there are cities in Arkansas as well as Wyoming that are on this list. So that also goes to show that, that you don't have to be in a super high cost of living area to get a high entry level salary in cybersecurity. So definitely don't cut yourself short when you are dealing with salary negotiations. Even if you're in a small city or somewhere with a lower cost of living, you could still be getting a more competitive salary, especially if you have the right skills and experience that that company is looking for. All right, so next I want to go into the average mid-level salaries for cybersecurity professionals. And this is definitely a big jump from your entry-level rules. So the average is about $112,000 per year or about $54 per hour. And the salary range is even wider than entry-level cybersecurity roles with the minimum being about $40,000 per year and the maximum being about $304,000 per year. So obviously a very, very wide range. And because this is a mid-career level role, there could be people with five years of experience, but there could also be people with 20 years of experience because obviously not everyone wants to climb the management chain, wants to climb the ladder. So some people kind of stay in this mid-level cybersecurity level for their whole career after their entry-level careers. So that's why you'll see this wide range of salaries. So depending on the trajectory of your career, it's not uncommon to see a lot of people stay within this price range, even if they start adding five, 10, 15 years of experience, because at some point salary do kind of plateau and I do want you guys to keep that in mind because if you're not going up to kind of that management chain becoming a manager or a director or a CISO even then you're likely going to stay as a SME or a subject matter expert in whatever area that you're in so as the scope of your work kind of stays the same or plateaus then your salaries will likely do the same besides normal raises that you'll see uh, adjusted for inflation or if there's some kind of performance bonuses and this is definitely made even more clear um, based on the next set of salaries that we'll see which is the senior level cybersecurity salaries all right so this chart may come as a surprise to some of you guys it definitely came as a surprise to me but i do have some opinions about why these numbers are this way but for senior cybersecurity professionals the average salary in the u.s is about 119 dollars per year which equates to about 57 dollars per hour the range is about $20,000 to about $185,000 per year. Now, obviously this range is actually smaller than the average cybersecurity professional salaries that we had just covered. 
but because a lot of these roles are reported on ZipRecruiter, it really depends on what role a person or company is putting their salaries under. And I do think that just general cybersecurity is definitely a lot more popular in terms of having to search up senior cybersecurity. So that may be a reason why cybersecurity salaries in general can actually be paid more based on this data on ZipRecruiter compared to senior cybersecurity professional salaries. But regardless, whether you're in your mid-career in cybersecurity or as a senior cybersecurity professional, you'll see that the average salaries of these two are definitely very similar. And that goes back to what I was mentioning before about the kind of plateau that you'll see in your career if you decide not to move up to a manager position to manage teams or to manage cybersecurity projects. So if you stay as an individual contributor, even in a senior cybersecurity role, you could still be getting similar to what you were making when you were in your mid-career, just because that scope of work or that scale of impact that you have isn't as high as it would be if you decided to go that manager route. But if you really think about it as a cybersecurity professional and individual contributor, moving to a manager role where you're managing people or projects, it really is a career change at that point because you're no longer working hands-on on any of the projects or any of the technical things. And some people People really just prefer to stay technical and continue working on what they already enjoy and what they like to do instead of going and becoming a people manager or a team manager so it really depends on what you want to do and i also want to throw in that this is a time of i guess life that people kind of settle down get comfortable and kind of have a family so you may have less time to dedicate to your work compared to your early career moving to your mid-career unless you just have crazy good work-life balance and you just really want to continue pushing your career forward so honestly it really just depends on what you're looking for out of your career. All right, so next let's go into the salaries for cybersecurity managers. This range is definitely a lot shorter with the average being about $136,000 per year, which equates to about $66 per hour. And the range is about $83,000 to about $171,000 per year. So this is definitely a very healthy range. Um, there's a little less than 100K difference and that can definitely account for the cost of living in certain cities as well as bumps for performance bonuses. But as you can see, there is definitely a clear jump and difference from a cybersecurity manager compared to a senior cybersecurity professional that is just an individual contributor. So if you do decide to go for that management route, you definitely have a higher range of income that is afforded to you in that role that has a higher scope and you're impacting more projects, more teams, and more people just across the board. But of course, this is no longer a cybersecurity professional role. Your main job is really to be a people manager, or maybe you have a portfolio of technology projects or cybersecurity projects. So definitely keep that in mind. The skills needed as a cybersecurity professional versus a cybersecurity manager are very, very different. So you definitely want to keep that in mind and go into whatever necessary training or personal and professional development courses to bring your career to that next step as a cybersecurity manager. Okay, so the last salary for a specific role in cybersecurity that I wanted to cover before I go into the levels of education is the CISO. So the CISO is probably the most popular cybersecurity executive role that most people know about. It is the chief information security officer of an organization, and they usually report right to the CEO or some kind of uh, chief technology officer. And the average salary for a CISO is about $171,000 per year with the low of this range being $76,000 and the high of this range being $263,000 per year. And this equates to about $82 per hour. So obviously this is a lot of money and it would definitely be for someone who is more senior in their career. Maybe they already have 15, 20 plus years of experience. So CISOs definitely have a lot more responsibility in terms of the scope of security of the organization. They are the head of all things security in your company. So it's definitely a lot of responsibility because if there is some kind of breach or a hack that is targeted at your company, you're likely going to be the one taking responsibility as well as ensuring that your organization has the right tools needed to bounce back up after a hack or some kind of security event. So obviously as a CISO, you're not gonna be touching anything really hands-on with cybersecurity. Your main focus is to lead the organization in terms of a three, five, 10 year plan and understanding where the security landscape is going so you can better prepare your organization for future threats and attacks that might come your way. So because CISOs are an executive role, there may be salary that isn't listed here specifically, including company stock options. So typically if your company is publicly traded and you're an executive, you're likely getting bonuses in the form of stocks or some other form of compensation that isn't just your average bonus that you would see uh, for a typical individual contributor. So this salary 
number that I'm showing here may or may not include those depending on whoever is reporting these numbers. So definitely keep that in mind. There could be CISOs making a lot more than this amount, especially for bigger and bigger companies and companies that take security a lot more seriously, including big tech companies, government agencies, financial services, and even in healthcare. All right, so with that, I do wanna go into the salaries based on education from associates to bachelors to PhDs, as well as boot camps. All right, so let's start with an associate's degree in cybersecurity. The average salary is about $50,000 per year, which honestly is not bad considering associate's degrees are a lot cheaper than bachelor's degrees. And you're usually only committed to a two-year degree compared to a four-year degree in a bachelor's. I've also included a list of common jobs that are hiring for associates in cybersecurity degrees, including cybersecurity analysts, systems analysts, as well as IT support specialists. And of course, these salaries range depending on your cost of living, as well as any other skills or experience that you're bringing to the role. All right, so going into a bachelor's degree in cybersecurity, the average salary is about $73,000 per year, which honestly is a very good starting salary. This is higher than the median household income of the US. So graduating from a average state college, you'll likely still have more student loan debt compared to someone who graduated with their associate's degree. But in the long term, there's definitely benefits to starting at a salary that is on average about $20,000 more compared to a two-year associates. And this is the list of roles that are hiring for a bachelor's in cybersecurity. And of course, this is not the entire list. With a bachelor's degree, there's definitely a lot more options for you in terms of the roles you can get hired to, which by the way, this is really showing roles that hire directly from college graduates. So for example, if you're an associate's graduate in cybersecurity and you already have five to 10 years of experience, you will very likely be able to get any of these roles the same way that someone with a bachelor's degree will because obviously experience trumps education at the end of the day if you're able to pass that interview and have the skills and experience needed to do the job then you're still going to get hired for the job all right so moving on to the master's degree in cybersecurity the average salary is about eighty nine thousand dollars per year which is another significant jump from a bachelor's degree there's a lot of schools nowadays that have a that have a four plus one bachelor's plus master's degree program and they combine them so you can complete your master's in a year or less and that honestly makes it a lot easier if you're someone who wants to get a master's but doesn't want to put in the two years that is pretty typical for a master's students so if your bachelor's program has that option to add that one year or maybe if you could take some master's level courses while you're doing your undergrad degree then you could have a higher chance of getting a higher starting salary once you are coming out of college with both your bachelor's and your master's and to put these numbers into perspective for you guys if you graduated with a bachelor's and started your job at seventy thousand dollars per year and then worked for two years and maybe got a a pretty decent 5k salary bump per year and you made it to 80k after two years of work experience compared to instead going for your master's and having an average base salary of eighty nine thousand dollars per year with just basically an extra year of education it makes a big difference unless you're switching companies every year or every two years then your salary isn't going to change significantly unless you get some kind of new education new certification or some new skill set that you can prove to your employer makes you a lot more valuable than you were before definitely don't undermine the the value of getting degrees even though i personally don't plan on getting my master's anytime soon or maybe ever i still think that it's definitely a good way to boost your average starting income and it's also another credential for someone to choose you for a raise or a promotion later on down the line and of course again i have included this list of jobs that hire specifically for those who have a master's in cybersecurity. All right, so next let's go into PhDs in cybersecurity. So this number is definitely going to surprise a lot of you guys. The average salary for a PhD or a doctorate in cybersecurity is about $177,000 per year. So I know this number sounds crazy and I don't know exactly how realistic it is considering a lot of PhD programs in cybersecurity have really just come out in the last five to 10 years. Um, cybersecurity was not as commonly taught as you know computer science or IT until recently so I would definitely keep that in mind while you're looking at these numbers but if you look at the actual roles that are hiring for a for a cybersecurity PhD you'll see that a lot of them include very high paying roles including a CISO director as well as manager roles so while I do think that a advanced degree especially a PhD can really help you in your career if the doctorate is something that you actually want to do because PhDs take a very very long time you can be in a PhD program for five to seven years it can be longer than a bachelor's plus a 
master's combined because if someone's doing a PhD in any field then you know that it's something that they're actually really really passionate about because you're doing your own individual research and you'll be writing a thesis defending your thesis so there's a lot that goes into PhDs and you definitely shouldn't just be doing it for the salary of course there may be people out there who might try but honestly I believe that if you're going through five to seven years of of extra schooling for a PhD then you likely are really really interested in the field of cybersecurity and not just the practical side but also the theoretical side and coming up with brand new ideas that other cybersecurity professionals or companies could take all right so last but not least let's go into the salaries for cybersecurity bootcamp graduates so honestly there's not that much information on actual salaries for bootcamp hires and a lot of them really just use numbers based on the average cybersecurity salaries for someone with a bachelor's degree and while i do think that that's a helpful number to keep in the back of your mind i also think it depends on the boot camp that you are joining as well as the skills and experience that you're getting from that boot camp so based on this career karma article the average salary for a cybersecurity boot camp graduate is about one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars per year which obviously is a lot of money and that is higher than both the bachelor's and master's in cybersecurity based on the numbers that we just looked at but Career Karma is also taking these numbers from 39 boot camps that they have listed on their website as well as from 25,000 job listings that they have listed as well. So if they're taking the average from that number, then I do think that it's worth it to give this a little more research because obviously a bootcamp is a lot more worth it in terms of time and money compared to a bachelor's or a master's degree. And I do think that companies are kind of moving towards that because there are going to be hundreds of thousands of cybersecurity jobs that are open without any candidates to actually fill those roles. And I do think that bootcamps are a great way to get your foot in the door and get those skills needed. But of course, you want to make sure that, that you're going into a good bootcamp that actually cares about you finding a job at the end of the day and not just one that's going to take your money. And by the way, I have made a video on, on whether or not cybersecurity and coding bootcamps are worth it. And I can link that video below if you guys are interested in checking that out. And in that video, I really go into the numbers of how likely and when you can expect to get hired after graduating a bootcamp. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Let me know in the comments below any questions that you have for me, including any other video topics that you might want to see from me. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! which equates to about $57 dollars.